Hi, I'm Steve Clifford, and today I'm going to talk about practical rifle ranges. And the reason that I'm going to do this is this is the last video before I prove what a general purpose rifle can be. And that's going to be coming up, so you probably want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. My next video that I will be posting is going to have a number of drills in both short range, medium range, and then all the way up to long range. And that's going to be the culmination of this project. So subscribe so you can get that video. But I want to talk about practical rifle ranges. And in researching this, I decided to start out and say, is this reasonable? What ranges are genuinely practical? I started with The Art of the Rifle by Jeff Cooper. If you don't own this, you're wrong. So what's frustrating though is in this book he goes over everything regarding rifle craft, but he never talks about a specific range. He talks about ranges in general. He gives some hints and some clues, and I want to talk about that real briefly, and I know that reading is probably not the most effective way, but I think this is important, and you'll see why as I move along here. The ranges at which we fire in the field are generally unknown. This is not as significant as it, as it may sound because modern rifle cartridges describe trajectories that may be counted on to stay well within the vital zone of live targets out to a point beyond which the shooter is unlikely to be able to group his shots. Going on a little bit. At what we may call normal ranges, the shooter rarely needs to adjust his aiming point for distance. This is not always true. Circumstances may arise where an extremely long shot is advisable. Under these conditions, the shooter must hold high and attempt his shot to drop his shot into the vital zone. This can be done sometimes in fighting, but the hunter who tries it in the game field should write himself a longhand apology in triplicate explaining why it was necessary for him to do it. Okay, that actually packs a lot into one paragraph and it really is interesting because what he's describing is the idea of maximum point blank range, which I've talked about before. That is the range if you sight your rifle in properly the bullet will never go more than three inches above or three inches below the line of sight. That means that with one aiming point, without changing anything on your scope or your hold, you can aim dead on and be in the vital zone of an animal. That's called maximum point blank range. But he mentions that that is also the range at which the group is going to open up enough to where you're not going to be able to reliably hit the vital zone anyway. So, that got me thinking about somebody much more modern. There's a guy named Chris Way, W-A-Y. Chris Way is a long-range competitor. He is one of the top-level competitors. He's also a trainer. He has a company called Riflecraft. He does coaching. Um, he's a thinker. He's a problem solver. And he looks at data. Everything with him is data-driven. Well, he realized that there just wasn't enough data to describe some of these things. So what he discovered, and what everybody kind of knew but hadn't really explored yet, is that if you shoot a three-shot group from prone, you might have you know a, a great rifle, a good heavy rifle, and from prone, you're going to have a half an inch group, half an inch, half MOA shooter, right? Then you go to the kneeling position. And by the way, guys, for you scout guys, kneeling does not mean going down on your knee and supporting your elbow. No. They mean kneeling down, putting a sandbag on a table or some other rest, and kneeling behind the gun. Very stable. Again, half, it, half MOA group. Great. They go to standing. They might use a tripod or some other stabilizing device. Sandbag. Shoot behind that. And again, a half an MOA group. But what he was discovering is the center of those groups move. They are in different points. And if you overlay them, you realize that they don't match up. 
and your group that used to be one half MOA is now considerably bigger. So he came up with what's called the rifle craft drill, the craft drill. He has a special target, but you can really use any target at 100 yards. And the craft drill works like this. You take one shot from standing, and again, not freehand, but standing rested on something. Same target, go to kneeling, take one shot from a stable position, drop down to sitting, then drop down to prone. You have four shots, one from each position. Then you repeat and repeat again. You now have three shots from four different positions, a total of 12 shots. Some of the better trained shooters in this country, some of the really good high level competitors in that drill are gonna have about a two MOA group. They're two MOA shooters from positional shooting. The absolute top level guys on their very, very best day might scratch a one MOA group. You are not a one MOA shooter. I'm not a one MOA shooter when it comes to positional shooting. And I talked to Chris, well, I texted Chris a number of times in putting this together, and he pointed out that in the field, you need to add at least one, one MOA to that. Okay, so that means a really good shooter is going to be a three MOA positional shooter in the field. Okay, that's three MOA. Uh, at 300 yards, that's a nine inch group. How big is the vital zone of a white tailed deer? It's about nine inches, isn't it? That kind of matches up with what Cooper was telling us. Practical hunting ranges, with some exceptions, if you are just one of those top level guys and you limit yourself to just that one shooting position, that one position where you know where that point of impact is and you know your group size, okay, maybe you can do that. But for practical hunting, you're inside 300 yards. That matches up with Jeff Cooper and it matches up with the whole scout rifle concept. But here's the deal is hunting the only reason that you have a gun? Is that the only reason to have a rifle? I would argue that it isn't. There are plenty of people that look at it and say, no, you can hunt with it, but there's other reasons. What about fighting for your community? What about fighting for your country? What about fighting for your constitution? Are there any reasons why a rifleman should learn to engage targets beyond that 300 yard range? And the long range community has said absolutely yes. It is practical to be out at those much longer ranges. They have developed skills and techniques and equipment and everything else to enable you to shoot practically well beyond those ranges. Now, before I finish up though, I want to address you military guys. Um, you're gonna put comments in my, uh, in, in this YouTube video, uh, maybe on Facebook, and you're going to point out that, yes, you were in the military and you shot with iron sights at 500 yards, no problem. Okay, you did. You absolutely did. And there were some very, very good reasons why you got that type of training and why you were trained in that specific way. But that was known distance and it was at very high contrast targets. Remember those big white target boards with the black targets on it? That's a high contrast target. That's not what we're talking about here. That is not practical shooting. The long range community has taken practical shooting out much, much longer. My project has been to try and combine the two. And the next video that I go over is going to combine the practical hunting distances and the practical long distance targets, because I think that's important. Being able to hit a two MOA target at a thousand yards is doable. It absolutely is doable. Think about what two MOA represents. That's 20 inches at a thousand yards. That happens to be the width of a man's shoulders. That's a pretty convenient use of, of size to figure out what you can and can't do, isn't it? So that's where I'm going with this. The idea of practical ranges has changed and it's changed in a way that I think we need to be looking at how to combine some of the things that we learned from the scout rifle and then some of the things that we can learn from the long range community, combine them and come up with a hybrid that can handle it all for a true general purpose rifle. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel.